this is E-Man Booze. Man, we got some badass whiskey for you here this evening. This Corsair Distillery Triple Smoke American Malt Whiskey will knock your socks off. Especially if you're a big fan of scotches and things of that nature. This here, this here will give you your fix for peat and smoke for days and days and days. And we're going to get into this here now because the story behind these guys, you know, of course, they're very innovative. They might be the most innovative uh, artisan distiller in the country today. And they're, they're just doing things with different grains and, and coming up with all these spirits. Check them out on their website, CorsairDistillery.com. they got so many things going on, I can't even keep up with all of it. But I do know this. If you're a Scotch drinker, you definitely want to hang around and finish watching this video here. All right, now. How do you make this spirit? Well, it all starts with malted barley. So barley, as you know, is a grain, but you've got to get it malted. Now, a lot of the artisan distillers, they just buy already malted grain. Not Corsair. They malt it themselves. I'm going to come around here and show you how they do it. So, great little website I found today when I was doing some of the research here. Um, it's called Tennessee Whiskey Trail. It's TennesseeWhiskeyTrail.com. It's a great website, especially if you want to learn about all the uh, distilleries located in Tennessee. But if you look here, let's get down to the pictures now. All right, so here's the process. You take the grain, the barley, okay, and you got to steep it. You steep it for something like two days or so. And what that does gets all the water in the grain and encourages to uh, germinate. Now, to get it to germinate, what you got to do next is you stick it on a floor. This is what the process is called floor malting. There's a few distilleries in Scotland that still do it, but most of them don't do it this way. This is the old school way of doing it, but I think it provides for a better finished product. So you rake it and turn it. You do this for about maybe three, four days until the grain germinates. When it germinates, when it cracks open and starts making that little plant there, what it's doing is it's, it's creating enzymes that have the potential to take the starch in the grain and convert it to fermentable sugars. All right. Here, you got to use some boots in there to stay clean. That's what this picture is. All right, then here... Here's somebody inspecting, they know it's germinated, and, and they're like, well, we got to get this to stop here, because if you keep letting it grow, you're going to have a plant. You don't want to do that. So they take it, they take it over to the malt house, to the kiln, to kiln oven here, and they throw it in the oven. And what they do, they start pumping heat in there and smoke. See these kettles right here? These kettles here contain the wood chips or wood or whatever they use, it's, it's proprietary. We don't know for sure. It could be chunks, could be chips, could be a whole bunch of stuff. But in any event, once that wood is pumped into that kiln oven, temperatures between 115 and, and 225, it fully finishes the malting process. Then you end it up with malted barley. So you take the malt, get it over to the distillery, grind it down, mix it with water, you, you know, make your mash, let it ferment, and you gotta throw yeast in there, of course. Let it ferment for a couple of days. Then you got the distiller's beer that you can put into your copper still and distill it to make this fine whiskey. Of course, you gotta age it now. So then it goes in new American oak barrels for however long. They use 30 gallon and 15 gallon barrels. So it could be a year, two years, 18 months. I don't really know. They don't tell us too much. All we know is they make a good whiskey and they stick it here in the bottle. Now this is classified as American malt whiskey. So there's certain things they have to do by law. They can't distill over 160 on average uh, and they got to put it in a barrel at no greater than 125 proof. So I'm sure they follow all those practices and, and, re and laws and regulations and all that good stuff. Alright, so now we put some in the glass just a few moments ago. What we going to do, we going to nose it up, we going to taste it. Oh! I forgot to tell you about the, the wood that they use in the smoking process, in the malting process rather. So, so when, they, when they're introducing that smoke to dry that barley out, they use three kinds of wood. They use beech wood, they use cherry wood, and they use peat, just like they do in Scotland. So if you're a big fan of Scotch whiskey and you love peaty scotches, like the scotches that come from the island of Isla, you know, like Lathroig and Lagavulin and uh, Bowmore. And what's that, what's the one that, that real big one that that is like the peat monster? Well, Ardbeg, of course, 
and uh, what, what's that one? Oh, Lafroy is the big one. They're, they're known for some of the peatiest scotches. But if you like that real smoky, sooty type of uh, flavor, uh, then you're going to go crazy when you try this one. Let's put her up on the nose and get her up on the palate. Ooh. Yeah, you pick up the smoke and it's the predominant, it's the predominant aroma to come out of there. But there is a nice syrupy sweetness from, from the malt, which is beautiful. And there's a brightness, almost like a little bit of a citru citrus aroma. Mmm, that's smoke though, let me tell you. But look here at this, the weight of this spirit, how it's made. The way it makes legs on this here glass, whew, that's, that's uh, it's a beautiful thing. Not only 80 proof here, it's 80 proof, but uh, it smells like it a lot bigger of a spirit than that. And that's because they pumping that smoke in there and they're getting it real nice and saturated with that flavor. Color's beautiful too. Definitely a, a nice copper, dark copper color. Let's put her up on the palate. Mmm. You do get some smoke. It's almost like no matter what smoked foods you like, whether it's smoked bacon, uh, ham hocks, fat back, whatever it is that's smoked, you, you know that note, that smoky note, ribs of course, that, you pick that up right off the bat, especially like a bacony type of thing going on in here, which I love. But, you know, what's even more intriguing is <clears throat> some of the flavor from the wood. Now, wood derives its flavor mainly, a lot of people don't know this, but a lot of it has to do with the soil and where the trees are grown. So you can grow, you can grow cherry wood in Kentucky, you can grow it in Tennessee, you can dry them out and smoke them both, you might get two different flavors from the wood. I never knew that until I read about that recently. It, it's amazing. The, the whole process of making spirits is just amazing. The smoke is wonderful. Let me get back in here because there's a couple other things I've tasted here. The sweetness, the malted sweetness. It's just like, you know when you open up a box of uh, Super Sugar Crisp and it's a lot of malt in there? You get that kind of malty flavor. It's got the beautiful balance. It's got a, uh, I, I, I'm picking up a little bit of uh, spicy things going on here. Like, like a little nutmeg and a little bit of clove. And, and I do get a little bit of a lemon citrus note in here. And I love that. But the wood... The wood is also giving me some of the things I love about wood. Vanilla, oak, of course. Like, like we need more smoke, right? And more wood. Well, it's a smoky spirit. We want to smoke. So anything that the wood contributes is just an added bonus. It got that flavor in there. And, and of the different woods, the cherry note from the cherry wood, it comes out in here. You get a little bit of a fruit tone and even a little bit of a cocoa note. I love that. Mmm. These guys are off the hook what they're doing. I can't wait to, to review this here Oat Rage whiskey because it's outrageous. I'm telling you. The gins are phenomenal. Here's a bottle of rum here that I haven't, I've haven't i gotten into but I haven't had a chance to review it yet. This distillery right here, what they're doing is nothing short of fantastic. And they got probably the best artisan uh, booze website or one of the best for sure on the internet. Check them out. CorsairDistillery.com. Check me out. I'm E-Man Booze. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I write the Distillery of the Month Club, or Distillery of the Month column for MainStreetDistilleries.com, and I'm working on something real special that I hope to tell you about here real soon. Get yourself some of this badass booze. Corsair Distillery. Bye, you all.